Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Darian and I'm going to be covering all things related to graduate school applications for psychology and counseling. So as I mentioned in my first video, I had to figure out a lot of the graduate school application process on my own. And along the way, I've learned quite a bit that I think may be helpful for me to share with you all. So today I put together a list of some of the top things that I wish I would have known before going into the application process and I'm going to share my top seven things with you today, so let's get into it. So beginning with the most important, in my opinion, is be sure to check that all of your programs that you are applying to are accredited. So if you're applying to doctorate programs in clinical psychology, counseling psychology, or school psychology, you should be sure that all programs you're applying to are accredited by the APA, the American Psychological Association. And if you're applying to master's or doctorate programs in counseling, then you should be sure that the program is accredited by KCREP. That stands for the Council for Accreditation of Counseling and Related Educational Programs. And the reason why I think this is such an important step for you to complete on your own is because, as you can imagine, programs that aren't accredited aren't super upfront about it on their website, so this is something that you should be sure to research on your own. It's super easy to check and see if your program's accredited either by going to the APA's website or KCREPS, and I will be sure to link both of those down below in the description box. And the reason why this step is so important is because it makes getting a job or getting licensed or getting your required year-long APA accredited internship so much more difficult, if not impossible, without accreditation of your program. Seriously, if you choose to listen to nothing that I say or you think that everything I say is absolute garbage, just please listen to this one piece of advice. It is so, so important. Honestly, I don't think I can imagine anything more heartbreaking than going through your program and working so hard in it only to find out you can't get the job you want, or you can't get licensed, or you can't get an accredited internship in order to graduate, just because you didn't spend a few minutes looking up whether your institution was accredited or not. So please just save yourself the potential heartbreak in the future and just spend a few minutes now making sure that any programs you're applying to are accredited. Number two on my list is that there are two books that I think are must-haves for the application process. The first book I would recommend is called The Insider's Guide, to graduate programs in clinical and counseling psychology. And the second one is called Getting In, a step-by-step -step plan for gaining admission to graduate school in psychology, the second edition. And I should probably specify that the Insider's Guide book is solely for those who want to pursue a doctorate in clinical or counseling psychology, while the step-by-step -step admission process book is for either master's or doctorate level. So I'll give you guys a little overview of each of these two books, and which one you choose to read first would kind of depend on what step of the application process you're currently in. So if you are completely decided that you want to pursue a doctorate program in psychology, I would definitely recommend just jumping straight into the Insider's Guide book. But on the other hand, if you are kind of iffy about which subfield of psychology you want to pursue, or if you want to go for a master's or doctorate, I would go for the second book that I mentioned. So although I'm currently in a master's in counseling program, the majority of the programs I applied to were actually doctorate in psychology programs called the PsyD. So the Insider's Guide book is a little unique in that it's re-released every year. So the most current edition is going to be coming out at the end of this coming January. And this book was so helpful to me because it lists literally all of the stats of every program you can can imagine for clinical and counseling psychology. They tell you the attrition rate or the percentage of students in a particular program that have dropped out. They tell you mean GRE scores for each incoming class or mean GPA so you can kind of compare your own scores and own GPA to see if that's an attainable school for you. And the stat that I would be sure to pay the most attention to is the percentage of students in that program who get an APA accredited internship. This is so important because you need this year-long APA accredited internship to graduate and get licensed as a psychologist. So if you see that 100% of a program students get APA accredited internships, you can be quite sure that that is a reputable program. On the other hand, if you see 70% of a program students get an APA accredited internship, 
that's definitely something that I would look further into and see why that 30% isn't getting those internships. And I think this book does a really nice job of putting the specialties within each program in the book. So for example, if you're really interested in forensic psychology specifically, you can go through this book and see all the programs that offer a specialty in forensic psychology. Another good thing about this book is that you can bypass the first step I mentioned of making sure that all programs you apply to are accredited. This book has already pre-screened all of these programs for accreditation, so if you find a program in this book that you like, you can be sure that it is already accredited. While this book mainly does focus on stats of programs, it also has a large chunk of the beginning of it dedicated to things like interviews, which is also really helpful if you're looking for interview tips. I also really liked the step-by-step -step guide book that I mentioned. This book does a really great job of laying out the process from start to finish. There is a timeline in the book that goes year by year, month by month of your undergrad career and tells you when you should be doing each step of the process. For example, when should you consider in asking your professors for recommendation letters? When should you think about studying for the GRE? When should you write your personal essays? All of that stuff, which is really helpful. I also really liked how the beginning of this book laid out each specific subfield of psychology. This can really help you narrow down what your interests are if you're still unsure what subfield you want to pursue. For example, many people don't realize that there is a difference between clinical psychology and counseling psychology. Some people don't know about health psychology or industrial organizational psychology. Others don't realize that there is a difference between school counseling and school psychology. So this book does a really nice job of explaining the similarities and the differences between each of these so you can be sure that you'll be applying to a program that you really enjoy. Because as you can imagine, if you show up to an interview or write a personal statement essay that describes the wrong job duties you're aspiring to do, that would definitely be a red flag to the admissions committee. The third thing on my list is start preparing for the GRE as soon as you possibly can. I know this is super easy to put off. I think we can all agree that no one likes standardized testing. For example, I dedicated my entire summer between my junior and senior year of undergrad to studying and taking the GRE. And I found this so helpful so I didn't have to worry about the GRE during my regular semester classes. Another reason why I recommend studying for and taking the GRE as soon as you possibly can is because it allows you more time in between the GRE and your application deadlines to retake the GRE if you aren't pleased with your first scores. But I know that there is a limit as far as how many times you can take it within a given period of time, I think maybe every three months, just to be sure that you are studying and improving. And this brings me to my fourth one, which is take the GRE even if you don't think you would need to. The reason I say this is because your GRE scores actually are good for five years after you take them. I think this is really nice because, for example, for myself, I will have two years after I graduate from my master's that I can still use my GRE in order to get into a doctorate program if that's what I decide to do. I also think it's really nice to take it soon after you graduate or soon before. Either way, even if you're just on the fence about pursuing graduate school in the future. Just because I think it can be so easy to get out of the academic mindset, if that makes sense, and you become less used to taking tests, so I think it's best to take it soon after you graduate or soon before, like I said, when you're still kind of used to test taking and being in academic mode, I think it's much easier to take it then rather than waiting a few years down the road. And your scores are good for five years, so why not? Number five on my list, and I know I just spent a couple of minutes talking about how important the GRE is, but my fifth one is don't get too hung up on the GRE. If you're going to put a lot of your focus into something, I would recommend the personal statement essays and the interviews. You're going to stand out much more to an admissions committee with a well-written personal statement essay and a good interview than if you just have a good GRE score. Number six on my list is don't be afraid to take your time finding the perfect graduate program for you. If you apply to your dream program and don't get in that first year, in my opinion, it's better to take some time after and explore what it is you want to do further and maybe revamp your application for next year 
rather than jumping into a program that did accept you but you aren't fully happy with it. And last on my list is you should be so proud for even applying to something that is so tough and so competitive. Only around 13% of the US population pursues a degree beyond a bachelor's degree and only 2-3% to get their doctorate degree. On top of that, clinical psychology is actually one of the most competitive graduate programs to try to get into. For example, most PhDs and fully funded SIDs only accept between 4 to 12 students on average. So with those numbers, as you can imagine, you probably will face rejection along the way and that is okay. So while it's definitely human nature to be disappointed if you get rejected, I think that you should also take some time to be proud of yourself and reflect on how hard you worked to get to that point. And that is the end of my list of the things I wish I had known before going into the application process. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are currently in a master's or doctorate program in psychology or counseling, comment down below if you agree or would add anything to any portions of my list. As always, don't be afraid to let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover more in depth for future videos or if you have any other requests that aren't related to graduate school. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, funny story, I literally recorded this video once already, but I thought that my face looked too orange in it. So I'm gonna try it again. Well, my name is Darian and I'm going to be covering all things related to applications.